They say the ocean is a vast, mysterious place, and nowhere is that more true than when it comes to the animals that live there. Just consider this. Scientists estimate that there are more than 500,000 distinct sounds produced by marine animals, and we've only documented about 1% of them. It's enough to make you wonder what other secrets marine life is hiding. And that's especially true when it comes to the animals that dominate our oceans, whales. Sure, we know a lot about the anatomy and physiology of whales, but we're only just beginning to figure out how they communicate with each other. And new research suggests that their languages might be more complex than we ever imagined. Take bottlenose whales, for example. We know that they make a whole host of different sounds, from the clicks they use to navigate and find prey to the whistles that seem to function like names. But a new study published in the journal NUS has revealed that bottlenose whales may use different syntax, essentially different rules for putting phrases together, depending on the topic of conversation. In other words, these whales might actually have different languages. To get to the bottom of this, researchers recorded nearly 20 hours of wild bottlenose whale vocalizations off the coast of Bermuda. They chose this location because it is one of the few places in the world where both wild bottlenose whales and a smaller population of resident Atlantic spotted dolphins can be found year-round. This is important because wild bottlenose whales are found all over the world. Different populations don't interact much since they tend to stick to the same general areas. As a result, Scientists think they might have developed distinct dialects. But back to the sounds. The researchers used advanced machine learning algorithms to analyze the hundreds of thousands of individual clicks and whistles in their recordings. These sounds are produced in different ways. Echolocation clicks are generated by forcing air through the larynx which creates a stream of sound waves that bounce off distant objects and then get picked up by the whale's bottom-facing jaw. Meanwhile, whistles are produced by manipulating the airflow through the head, kind of like a wind instrument. And pulse calls, well, they're a mysterious one. They're rare, only lasting a few milliseconds, and we don't really know how they're made or what they mean. Now, when analyzing bird songs or human speech, scientists often look at the sounds in context. For example, we know that certain strings of words generally come before other ones. Like if someone says, can you pass the salt? You know that please probably isn't coming next. So the team wanted to see if something similar was happening with the whales. And what they found was kind of mind-blowing. First, the whales' echolocation clicks didn't seem to follow any particular syntax. They were basically the sonic equivalent of random noise. On the other hand, the whistles did seem to follow specific rules. The syntax varied depending on the situation. For instance, during mating season, males produced longer sequences of whistles, whereas during non-mating season, they produced shorter ones. And those shorter sequences were also used when the whales were trying to warn each other about potential predators. In other words, bottlenose whales don't just use different sounds for different topics, they actually use different rules for organizing those sounds. It's syntax. What's more, the syntax varied depending on the social context. When the whales were alone or in groups of less than five, they used different rules than when they were in larger groups. 
And these weren't just random variations either. Different syntax might actually convey different meanings. For example, the shorter sequences might be used when the whales are in groups because they have to be. Longer sequences might be used when the whales are alone because they can be. Basically, just like humans, bottlenose whales appear to tailor their language to their audience. Of course, there's still a lot that we don't know about these sounds, not least because whales are wild animals and studying them in the wild is tricky. But the next time you hear a pod of whales singing, just remember, you're listening to a language as complex as any on land. We are making incredible discoveries about the world around us all the time. And at Minute Earth, we love exploring all the amazing science happening just beyond our everyday experience. Our podcast, hosted by a former Nobel Prize winning scientist, takes you into the minds of brilliant researchers as they recount their personal journeys to make sense of the cosmos. You'll hear about the unexpected ways that scientists work, the challenges they face, and the triumphs that change our understanding of the universe. New episodes premiere every Monday and Wednesday, and you can listen on various platforms.